Well, first thing, I think you have to see how fear is manipulated. You know, how fear, whether we're talking about, you know, the, the, uh, the weather forecast that says horrible weather news, more at eight. Well, they know you're going to tune back, you know, and I think that, you know, they're, they're very skillful politicians on the world stage today whose main weapon is fear. It's convincing people that uh, the other, whatever the other may be, is a mortal enemy. That's also essential if you want to do bad things to people. You have to take away their face. You have to take away their humanity. And uh, fear will allow us to do that. You know, uh, encourage us to do that. You know, I remember reading a book years ago about the Allied bombing policy in, in World War II. And um, the author pointed out that when the United States entered the war, they had very strict limits on their bombardments. They were going to bomb military targets. By the middle of the war, they changed it. They began to bomb civil civilian targets. And it culminated in the two great nuclear catastrophes at Nagasaki and Hiroshima. In order to do that, they had to change the propaganda to do their best to dehumanize the Japanese and the Germans, to make them other than human beings. Because generally most people, unless you're a sociopath, don't like to harm people on, uh, without reason. So I think that fear is used that way. We have, as, as Christians, we listen to the first words that Jesus says after his resurrection. And it's peace. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And I, I think that the example of Christians who have endured all sorts of suffering, to, even today, is a witness that faith and fear ultimately are incompatible. So if my vision includes one who passed through death and returned alive, well then I think that is the antidote to fear.